Hello again. Here we are to talk about JavaScript. I'm going to continue uh, with this shopping cart tutorial here. Um, and so far, you know, we've got our shopping cart, and it, uh, you know, like it's it's just in code right now. So it's it's listing, you know, all the items here in the console, and later we'll we'll make it display things on the page. Um, and so far, you can see, like, you know, we can, we can add an items to the cart. So this is six items, and then. There's a function that runs that removes an item, so now it says there's five. And then this gives us a total count of the, the amount of things we're buying, right? It says 13 because some of these maybe we're buying five of this and two of this other one, right? Um, and then this gives us the total cost of the cart. And so we have functions to do all that for us, um, you know, like total cart and uh, total count or count cart, right? At the bottom here, um, I have three more functions that we want to take care of. And one of them is list cart. And this function, its goal is to display the cart on the page. And this brings up an interesting idea because, you know, we could write code in here that actually displayed the cart in the HTML page. In other words, it output HTML and, and wrote that into our document. Um, and that would be okay, but it would create a situation that um, that might not be good if we wanted to edit the, the the files later in the future, right? You know, if we wanted to work on this in the future or share this with someone else or, you know, potentially use this cart in another project, right? We don't want to have to write the code over and over again for every project, right? Or, you know, copy the file and then go in and change some of the names or something. That would be kind of silly, right? Instead, you know, we can just make this so it's portable, and that means we can move it from project to project, and by not um, by not uh, writing code in here that actually generates the HTML, we could say our project is is decoupled, right? So this is decoupled from the HTML. This this file only has the logic to run the cart in it, okay? And so what we'll do with this is is this function right here is just going to return an array. Okay, it'll just be an array of what's in the shopping cart. And then, the you know, it'll return it or send it somewhere else. And then we don't have to worry about, you know, what happens after that. So wherever we send the array, the, the you know, the, the area of the code that requested the array by calling on list cart, it will deal with the array and display the array however it feels it should be displayed. Right, and that's called decoupling. So we're decoupling. This is not connected tightly to some other piece of code. You know, this code just returns an array, and that's plenty good for any anything, right? Okay. So, uh, so what does that mean? Well, um, all we got to do is return, you know, the array. You know, we could say, you know, function, and I'm gonna put a comment here, and then we'll put a curly bracket there. And there we go, right? So now we could say here, you know, maybe um, return cart, right? Because cart is an array. Um, this this is okay, but it could create problems. Now, if we're careful about how we use our code, it, it's not a problem. But the, the problem here is that, um, or the potential problem, is that when you um, pass a value that is an array or an object, and this array has objects in it, so it's kind of both of those, right? Um, when you pass um, a variable that, that contains an array or an object, in JavaScript, you're not sending a copy of that value. Instead, you're sending a reference to the original value, right? So, you know, let, let's give it a try. What if I said, um, what if I do a little test here and I say var, you know, a equals a b and c right and then what if i say variable b equals variable a so a is an array with three items in it and now b should be an array with three items actually b is the same array with the same three items so you know for example if i was to say you know b dot push right and then i push the letter you know d into the array. Then if I said, you know, console log, you know, A, and then I said, you know, console dot log B, 
right? And then we'll see what these look like, right? Um, you know, you might think that they would be different, but they're actually going to be the same value because, like I said, if we set b equal to a, we're not creating a copy of this. What we're doing is we're um, we are um, passing a reference. Okay, so the reference is, you know, basically, you know, to save on memory, the computer doesn't duplicate objects. Instead, it keeps this object in memory, and then when you assign its value to somewhere else, it just gives you the same address in memory where this original array was stored, right? Let's take a look at that, right? So uh, let me get the browser here. And then you can see, like, oh, look, array A and array B are the same. Right. And so this is the problem that I want to avoid with our shopping cart. Right. So if I, you know, if I was to pass this shopping cart to some other part of my program and that part of my program, you know, set the cart variable to nil or, you know, added an item to the cart or edited the values of the items in the cart, then it would be editing the original shopping cart. And that could create a, a problem. Right. You know, like you know, if some other part of the program played with the code in the shopping cart, you know, as part of its display mechanism, but, you know, it modified the cart, then, you know, your shopping cart would be, the actual contents of it would change, and that could be a problem, right? So how are we going to deal with that, right? Now, this example was very simple, and the easy way to copy an array is to use slice, okay? And slice does a few things um, here, I'm without any parameters, it's just going to create a copy of this array. Okay, so if I slice array A, it's going to return a, a complete copy of this array, not a reference. It's going to make a new array with the same items in it. And when you slice, you can begin anywhere in the array and say how many items you want to slice out. But here, if you don't have any parameters, it gets the whole thing, right? So let's let's take a look at that, right? So I'll refresh here. And this time you can see, you know, I passed array A, right? And then I got, you know, A, B, C, and then I pushed an item into array B, which is now a copy through slice, right? And now you can see I've got array B and it's got four items in it, right? So, so now these are two separate arrays and I can deal with them separately. And that works pretty good here. And the problem with our shopping cart is our array is a bunch of objects. And if we do the same thing with, with objects here, and I'll, I'll do it again, if I say, you know, var um, a equals, you know, an object with a property of, you know, age, 22, um, name of Joe, and then I say variable b equals a, right? And then maybe I say b.name equals Cindy, right? And then I say, you know, console um, log and, oh uh, wait, let's uh, log A and B again. Like this, right? You should be sure to, everybody should be sure to do these for yourself and type them. Trust me, just watching me do it, may, you may think, oh, I get that. But, you know, if you type it for yourself and you watch the output and the output window and you use some different values here, you'll get a lot more out of this, you know? Um, so, anyway, so we'll, we'll test this out now with the object here. And then I'll go to the, the window and refresh. And then you can see actually now. The name of the first object is Cindy, and the name of the second object is Cindy, and that's kind of a problem, right? Um, right, because, you know, we thought we had a copy, but actually with objects just like arrays, you know, when you set the value of one element to the value that is, you know, an object or an array, you're really just setting um, the new value as a pointer to the original object, okay? So, uh, so, you know, we've got a problem because our array, if we slice it, it's full of objects, items, remember? Right? Like, remember, it's item, item, item. So every one of the items in this array is, a, is an object, right? Okay? And if we slice it, really we're going to get, you know, a new array, but all the objects in there will be pointers to the original items and so that really doesn't you know just creating a slice of this array isn't going to do us any good we'll have a copy where you can change you know we could delete or add items here without affecting 
the original array, right? You know, if we if we sliced the cart here like this, we would get a, a copy of the cart array, but the objects inside there would be references to the same objects that we that we have in the original cart. Okay? So what are we gonna do? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy all of our objects. And as far as I know, JavaScript doesn't have um, doesn't have a function that lets you duplicate an object directly or create a copy of it like slice with an array. But what we're gonna do here is this. I'm gonna create a um, a copy, right? So I'll say, let's call this cart copy, right? And it'll just be an empty array. And then what I wanna do is I want to loop through every item in cart. And every time I loop through an item in cart, I'm gonna create a variable called um, item, which is the item in the cart. So that'll be cart bracket i, right? And then I'm gonna create an item copy, right? Which will just be a plain JavaScript object. We could actually use our item up above, but I think I'm gonna just do it this way. Um, and then what I wanna do is, is this for in loop is very interesting because not only can we use it to loop through every item in an array, we can use it to loop through every property in an object. So what I'm gonna do here is here I'm, I'm looping through each item in the cart, right? And then here, as we loop through each item in the cart, you know, item will, will be each of those items. So if we have five, up, five items in the cart, then, you know, for the first loop, this will be item number one, and then item number two, and then item number three. And then every time we go through one of those items, we're going to loop here, and I'm going to call this P for property in item. So we'll say for var P in item, and we'll loop through each, each property of this item and what we'll do is we'll set it as the property with a, as a property with the same name in the item copy object okay so we'll say bracket p and then we'll say equals item bracket p right okay so here we're we're going to loop through every property in item and make that a property in copy and give it the same value, okay? And then after we've done the loop, so our loop begins here and ends here for the item loop, and then the array loop is on the outside, what we'll do is we'll say um, cart copy dot push to add the item copy to the cart copy, okay? And then after all of the looping is done, we'll say return cart copy, okay? So now here, we're creating a whole new array, you know, completely different, and every item in the array is going to be a copy, right? A completely, you know, separate object from the original items in the original cart and then this will be pretty safe so we can pass this around and you know some other part of the program can just do whatever it wants to it and it really won't affect this you know this shopping cart system here okay and you know we can give it a quick test we'll do it this way we'll say um, and remember this function returns a value so if I say console.log and then I say you know list cart then the value that's returned from list cart will be displayed in the console. So we'll save that and we'll test it. Let me go to the browser here and uh, refresh it. And you can see here's my cart with one, two, three, four, five items. And then here's the copy. Now, since I didn't use the constructor for item, these say object, but essentially they should be the same. So here's object number one, you know, and it's got a count of five and there's apples and they're a dollar 22 each right and if I were to um, to do this like uh, if somehow along the way you know maybe um, 
Maybe we have a variable here called array. And just, just imagine like this part right here is happening in some other part of the program, like, you know, that we don't know anything about. And you've called on, you know, list cart here. And so you, we've got the array that's a copy. And somehow, like in all of the business that's going on there, you said, you know, array um, item zero dot name equals, you know, mistake, right? So somehow we made a mistake and we renamed one of the items in the cart by accident, right? That can happen, okay? <laughs> You know, it'll, and you won't, and you won't even know where or how, right? It'll just crop up accidentally, right? So um, let's imagine that that happens, right? And then we display the the array here, right? If uh, you know, if I refresh this, and then I look at this first object here, you can see, oh look, the name is mistake. But if I look at this array here, and I open it up, and I look at the first one, you can see the name is still Apple. Right now, just to prove the point here, let's give this a quick test. What if instead of returning the cart copy, we returned, um, you know, just the cart, right? So, you know, if I do this by mistake, right? Like if I just, like I could just leave all this code out here and just say return cart. But if I do that, watch what happens, right? I refresh it here. And then you can see here's my array, and it's all items. And when I open up the first one here, you'll see it says mistake. And then when I open up this one over here, you can see it says mistake. So actually, this, you know, modifying this cart that I returned modified the original, right? Because it is the original, okay? And what if we do this, though? I mean, you know, the, the other thing we could do is we could say, you know, well, well, let's slice this array, right? So if I if I return a slice of cart, then the, the 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 array itself that we're returning is a copy, but the objects inside are not. They're still references to the original, right? So uh, let's take another look, right? So if I refresh this one, you know, now this is a copy of the array up here. So if we removed an item, it wouldn't affect the count, you know, one, two, three, four, five items there, but since the ob objects inside are, are references, this one says mistake, and this one up here, you know, it also says mistake. So that would be a problem. So that's the problem we're trying to avoid here, right? So um, I know it seems like kind of a lot of work just to return it, you know, you know, the same array that we already have, but, but this is the safest way to do it, okay? So I'm going to recommend that we take that approach. And, uh, you know, I, I know that seems a little like, computer, you know, technical stuff there, but it's really to understand JavaScript, one of the that one of the key areas to, to really get a lot out of it and understand what's going on is to understand that that concept of reference. Okay, so arrays are always a reference and objects are always a reference. Okay. And uh, so anyway, so thanks for watching and I hope that that's helpful and maybe shed some light on JavaScript and, you know, maybe you guys can use this on something interesting in the future. Thanks for watching.